As a composer, we often consider what we try to get from each key. In string writing, writing in keys is slightly different than writing in a piano or for voices. With string quartet, we often try to lean into the open strings, so C, G, D, A, and E. And a general rule of thumb is to lean more towards sharps than flats. Ben, could you talk to us about playing in sharp versus flat keys? Yes, sure. Um, just in general, sharp keys just are more comfortable to play. Really, the you know our sort of home keys, as you were just saying, sort of D major, very happy key, A major, and so you go through the, the sharp keys first. Um, in general, sharp keys have a this is really generalizing, sort of have a brighter feeling. And I can think of sort of an example, contrary to that, Vorjak like using lots of sort of big flat keys. And it does, for me, it creates a kind of a duller tone. Um, as far as reading, I prefer reading in sharp keys as well. So even Haydn exploited that and writes slow movements with loads and loads of sharps for a special effect or tonality. Um, so we're going to give an example now of um, F sharps versus, versus G flats. This could be a minefield because in lots and lots of different uh, examples, depending on the keys that we play in and how we decide we're going to chew uh, to each other, this can vary. But for, for this example, we're going to show that F sharp and G flat um, by, we decided to play the F sharp slightly higher than the G flats. So this will, um, this won't sound in tune. Thank you for that. You can hear with the two F sharps and two G flats that actually the notes do sound different. With key considerations, another thing to consider is the cadence points with your keys. For example, if you're writing a luscious harmony and you're in B flat major, every time you go to cadence, you will never feel like you get that really low B flat sound. It always cadence to the high B flat. Now the quartet is going to play an example where we hear this beautiful descending line and when you want to feel a cadence end on the bottom note, it never does. So there is um, something that you could use in your writing um, for either cello or viola, which is an amazing effect. Lots of people don't like it because of the tuning back up afterwards. But if that bass line, and instead of going up the octave, went down to a B flat, I won't reach you now because it'll take me ages to go back, but that would be an amazing effect because you have this extra, it goes down much further than you think, and it's like having a double bass, and it is an incredible effect. <laughs> 